Good evening, folks, and welcome to An Hour with Bob. Here we are, April 22nd, 2013, and all the, the last week has been crazy with what happened in Boston with the, the bombers, the Boston bombers. On Friday, the 19th of April, at approximately 8.40 p.m., suspect number two, the, the white-haired uh, suspect, oh, I'm sorry, the white-hatted suspect, was captured after well over 4,000 police officers went door to door all over the Watertown area and they captured the guy in the, in the back of a boat as a result of a uh, you know, homeowner noticing blood in his backyard and he actually peeked in as I'm told and he saw somebody inside so he called he did the right thing he called 911 and as we all know they apprehended him it was probably, and it may very well have been, the largest manhunt in the history of the United States, when you think about it. And what makes this country different from any other country in the world, and as you know, I've traveled in a lot of places all over the world, this country, America, we, we will spare no expense to find someone that has harmed even just one citizen of the, these United States. And that's what makes us different than almost any other country in the world. In fact especially uh, uh, the group that uh, these people aspire to be part of, uh, uh, human life isn't looked upon in a, in a very high regard. You know, they, they think that they can uh, do almost anything with women. They treat women with much disrespect. They, they don't treat everybody equally, let's put it that way. I gotta be careful, I guess, what I say. But the message to any and all prospective terrorists then and now, if they don't know it already, they should know it. You harm even one American, and you get to see your maker. This is maybe what you want to see in the first place, but you get to see your maker sooner than later. And P.S., by the way, uh, there are no virgins waiting for you. I don't know where they get that from. There's 79 virgins or whatever, 72 virgins. It's, by the way, if you get somebody, they're already dead, what are you going to do with 79 dead virgins? So it makes no sense to me that these people that... They think, they turn the Koran around, obviously uh, most, probably 95% of the people that uh, practice the mo Muslim faith, uh, God-fearing people, but that other small percentage are really totally against what they call um, infidels, us, people that don't believe. If you don't believe them, it's not like you believe you're, uh, you, you don't believe you're against, and therefore we hate you and we want to kill you. That's their attitude. And unfortunately, uh, that's why uh, several people were killed at the Boston Marathon, and two responders were killed, two officers were killed after, you know, in, in the chase for these guys or during the chase before they were apprehended. And that's, that's sad. That's very sad. And now, it, we have a Rhode Island connection because the, the wife of the older brother is from North Kingstown, Rhode Island. And I will be surprised to hear that she's not somehow uh, indicted or implicated in this whole thing because it almost makes no sense that she was, she converted to the, the, that faith and she wears the veil and the, the burqa and all that stuff. And uh, she graduated from North Kingstown High School, I even understand. And it doesn't make it's hard, it would be hard to believe that she didn't know what was going on. And if she did, in fact, then she should get the, the same punishment that the younger brother or the, her brother in law is hopefully going to get. Anyway, now we get off my, my mount or my sermon on the mount, so to speak. And we will get back to uh, actually, I should mention it anyway, you know, these get rich uh, schemes where uh, you have, see them on TV late at night. I'm, I'm up most of the time late at night anyway, where they sell DVDs on how to uh, uh, get rich with real estate. Well, I'm a realtor, but legitimate realist, realtor or, or realtoring and, or selling real estate is much different than what these guys do. They're really, sell, they're really selling tapes. They're conning you into buying their tapes. They've got to say, they're telling you how you can get, buy 20 houses without any money down. You don't need mortgages. You don't need down payments. Well, first of all, it's, most of it's bull, number one. And number two, and more importantly, if you know any landlords, ask them what it's like to be a landlord in this day and age. 
I've been a landlord for well over 30 years, and I was thinking about this the other day. It amazes me the excuses people use and people come up with for why they can't pay the rent on a particular month. Number one and the best one, or not the best one, but the most common one is the December excuse. I call it the December excuse. Where in December they can't pay the, the rent because, what, Bob, you want rent? I got I got Christmas gifts to buy. I got to buy Christmas gifts. Don't you have any compassion? I can't pay the rent because I got to buy Christmas gifts. Or my car broke down. That could happen any time of the year. Or I can't pay rent because I was out sick for a week. I had this, a tenant tell me this recently. In fact, she owes me quite a bit of money because uh, she, was, she had a, a minor operation, in and out, same day surgery. And I felt like saying to her, but I didn't say to her, but hopefully she sees this and, and will understand. She said she couldn't pay the rent because she was out of work because she had uh, elective surgery. So I, I felt like saying to her, yeah, well, guess what? I had total knee replacement. And I still have to pay my mortgage, I still have to pay my insurance, still have to pay my taxes. I can't say to the bank, I can't say to the insurance company, I can't say to the city of Pawtucket that, oh, I can't pay because I had uh, a knee replaced. No, I still have to pay it. But unfortunately, tenants don't see it that way. They think you're supposed to, everything is uh, them and nothing is you. And why couldn't I ask them? I, uh, I would love to say to them, well, wait a minute. Uh, I had my knee replaced, so can I ask for more rent this month from you because to help offset the fact that I'm out of work? Or can I get paid early? No, obviously, that's, well, that wouldn't work. Anyway, we're going to talk. I'm, I'm going to bring a, an, another lawyer in here, a couple of lawyers in here, and maybe a tenant, somebody from a tenant's association, and we'll do battle back and forth across. Uh, oh, by the way, it really kills me when the same tenant that can't afford to pay their rent is smoking cigarettes that are $8 a pack, and you see them out... Uh, or you see uh, in, in their trash, you see all the wine bottles and the liquor bottles and all the expensive stuff. They buy the good stuff, of course. And, and the other thing is, they do something that I never do. Order, uh, order in. You know, they have food shipped to their house. Instead of either cooking or going out to get it, they would rather pay the extra money because, I guess, because they don't pay the rent so they can afford to do it. Anyway, and last but not least, the most common thing that the tenants do is they'll say when it's time to move, when you're end up having to throw them out for non-payment of rent. They're two months behind or, or getting to that point, they'll say, well, use my security deposit as my last month's rent. What they don't realize is, or well, uh, they do realize, but they don't want to admit to you, is that the security deposit is for the damage that they may have done to the property, which in 90% of the cases they did, even if it's as, as minor as ripping up a carpet or staining a, a carpet to the point where you can't use it anyway and you have to replace it. But you, you, got no, you have no recourse, or you have a recourse in court, but you have no money to fall back on because you've used the security deposit for the last month's rent. And people say to me, well, you, you don't, why do you let them do that? I said, you don't let them do that. They just don't pay the rent. And by the time you take them to court, it's beyond that month anyway, so you, you might as well eat it. And by the way, when you get to court as a landlord, you lose about 75% of the time. They almost always favor the tenant. And if not totally favor the tenant, they'll say, if the tenant owes you $3,000, they'll say, well, why don't you take $1,500 and you'll just be happy they moved out. That's what I've gotten in, in the past. Anyway, in fact, I have an apartment for rent right now, and you've got people coming in to rent an apartment, and they'll say to you, uh, oh, how many people in your group? Oh, one or two. And it's almost always a lie. They'll say to you, uh, even though the, my ad says no pets, I'll bet you in the last two weeks I've had at least 15 people say to me, Oh, do you accept dogs? Now they know, they saw the ad. Do you accept dogs, or it's cats, or whatever? No, uh, just out of curiosity, I'll ask them, what kind of dog you got? And almost, at least, at least half the time, it's, oh, a terrier. What kind of a terrier? They don't want to say pit bull, but it's a pit bull. They don't want to say it, they'll say terrier, uh, or a boxer. And of course, you got to get it out of them, that you, you mean a pit bull. Oh, no, but yeah, but it's only, it's a good, Pit bull. This is, this is a pit bull. I've had, I had somebody just the other day say to me, uh, when I, I said, it, it is a pit bull. Yeah, but it's a good one. You, you got to meet them. I'm sure you'll like them. I said, well, what about all my, all my other tenants? You think they're going to like them? You think they're not going to want a dog themselves? And by the way, I have a, a beagle myself. Isn't it true that beagles and well, pit bulls don't like other dogs? So I would have to worry every day that you bring your dog out that my dog is going to come out of it alive.
and then you know they just get frustrated and they don't want the apartment. All of a sudden, the, the beautiful apartment with split level, with spiral staircase, everything, all of a sudden it's not that nice anymore. And they wonder why they can't find an apartment. And that I, I've had one girl, she, she says, I walked at 13 apartments. And she's like, I can't understand why I can't find one will accept my pit bull. By the way, in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, and in Woonsocket, Central Falls, and I'm not sure Providence, at least three of them, you have to have a $100,000 liability insurance policy in order to have a pit bull, if at all. I, in Pawtucket, I, I'm, I'm not even sure. I think they, they just out, outright, outright banned them unless you're grandfathered in. I don't think you can have a pit bull. Anyway, enough of my story. Now we'll get back to the show. And with us tonight, we got uh, a sergeant from the Newport. Newport Police Department, that's gotta be a nice job. Newport cop, a sergeant. How long you been a sergeant, Frank? Frank, how you doing? How are you, sir? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice. I've uh, been on the, the job for about 19 years. About? Uh, wow. That's a, that's, years. that's a long yeah, time. Starting on 20 very shortly. Yeah? And uh, just promoted to sergeant a few months ago. Oh, congratulations. So thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank and you. Um, I, we, we see, I see you know somebody that's from my neighborhood originally, right? Yes, Carol? that's correct, Carol. Yeah, she retired. She did, yeah. Was with but, Newport uh, Police for many years. Yeah, she was a good friend of my sister, a good friend. Well, we lived with neighbors. She oh. lived... It's diagonally right. across the street from me in well, McGill Street in Pataka. That's the old saying, Rhode Island is small. Oh, <laughs> very small when it comes very to small. that. That's correct. And as I have talked about in the past numerous times in my travels, I've run into Rhode Islanders in all parts <clears throat> of the world. I interviewed, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I interviewed a Rhode Islander in Thailand. Really? Yep. Uh. <coughs> excuse me, and that was a planned interview, but while I was interviewing him, two people walked by and I was, I, I was doing my camera work because I'm not paying for a guy to go to Thailand with me right. or a woman to go to Thailand with me. Walking behind us, behind him as I'm interviewing him, this couple, and the guy turned to the wife and she said to him, hey, look who that is. That's Bob from Bob's Big Adventure. <laughs> How do you like that? Small world. That's in Thailand. That's 10,000 miles away. Absolutely. But that, that's, and it, so it, that goes against what people say about Rhode Islanders don't travel, right. don't ever go anywhere. They that's may not go from Pawtucket to right. Warwick, but they'll go across the world somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. On a similar note, I met a friend of mine in high school in Kenya, Africa. Oh my God. And I was there on a study abroad program back in 1987, and he happened to be with the U.S. Navy, and I met him down on the Indian coast. Wow. And uh, I hadn't seen him since high school, but that's how small the world is. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Right. Remember, the, remember the, the ship that came in that, uh, oh, I, I forgot what they call it, it's about 350 feet long. It had the, uh, those, um, Oh, those fan things on them. The, um, come on, help me out. It was here last year, last <laughs> last July, I think it was here. It was in a brand new ship, beautiful, beautiful ship. Right. I went on it. We went on it. Were you with me when we went on that ship, the Corey? The, the ship that. Um, oh, what the heck are they called? Those things. Those uh, the things with the fans underneath them. The hydrofoils. Hyd hydrofoils. Yeah. I think they call them something different, but it's kind of the same thing. You know what I'm talking right, about, right? right? right yes. They're two giant ones. I never yeah. seen them. They were bigger than this room. Yeah, Each one is a hovercraft. 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 Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, they're two of the hovercraft on this ship. Right. And uh, I got to go on the ship. Right. And come to find out, the captain, the captain of the ship, was from Coventry. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and back, uh, sadly, there'll be no air show this year. That's, yeah. And sadly, they had the. Remember when we got to interview the the kid? The, uh, the kid from Rhode Island. Uh, we got to interview the, the pilot of the F-22, which was the first time people were getting to see that thing right. on the ground. The stealth fighter. This was a couple years ago. Right. The pilot was from Rhode Island, and I coached him in Little League. Wow. That's how weird things sure, are. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. So what do you got going on? You're doing so, you're in Newport. Wait a minute, you, do you live in Newport? Are you from Newport? Um, I'm, I'm originally from Newport, born and raised on Aquidneck Island. And I've uh, been there all my life. Yeah. I live close by in a, a nearby community. Um, got uh, three kids and going through life just like everybody else. But uh, we have our uh, big annual police parade coming up. That's what we're talking about here. That's you got right. the police parade. That's when correct. is that? When is that? It's That's coming up in a couple weeks, coming right? Coming up on May the 5th is the actual date of the police parade, the 2013 uh, Quidnick Island National Police Parade. Um, it's uh, become a uh, very big event down there on Aquidneck Island. Now, wait, what time does it happen? It uh, steps off at 11.50 a.m. on Sunday, May 5th. May 5th. In front of the Hampton Inn on West Main Road in Middletown. Okay. There'll be a, a short ceremony prior to the step off of the parade. We'll commemorate the uh, law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty the year pre previously. 
Uh, in, in 2012, as you may know, uh, these country lost 120 law enforcement officers. Wow, that's unbelievable. Killed in the line of duty. That's unbelievable. Now, how many parades, how many times has this parade been? This will be the 30th consecutive parade. Now, that, uh, that is the biggest parade in Newport, isn't it? It's, uh, it's uh, still, it's uh, mirrors the, uh, the Irish parade right. that happens, St. Patrick's Day parade. Um, but there are quite a few units, and it's yeah, a, it's, it's a, a pretty big. It's, it's about a, a three I'm hour. A, I've I've gone to it almost every yeah. year. It's been, we've it's had about it a now. three hour uh, yes. parade. It's yes. very very long. Yeah. Yeah. But we commemorate a lot of, of things that day. It's very important to us down there. And again, like I said, it's 30 years consecutively. Right. But it is technically uh, it began in 1973. Okay, so you had some a break. One we break. Where break. was it? It was uh, from uh, s about a seven year hiatus, and then in 1983 it picked back up. Okay. Um, and it's been going on since. And uh, again, the parade committee is made up of uh, civilians, uh, numerous organizations that right, help us right. out, the FOPA, yep. the local lodge, the state lodge, um, also police officers from the direct communities there on Aquidneck Island, and officers from other communities throughout the state. And how many, do you happen to know how many com uh, police well, departments are, are um, represented? This year we'll have 53 different police wow. departments represented. Wow. Yeah. And then there'll be 22 bands from, a, from across the United States, uh, high school bands. Uh, we're going to have several, uh, obviously, numerous uh, bagpipe bands uh, leading the parade. Now, what's with the bagpipe thing? What, what's well, the affiliate? Because you always see bagpipes in, in, in po anything. To do yeah, with it's the related police. to the, po the police uh, memorial. Right. It's related to uh, police service. Uh, many of those bagpipe bands are made up of police officers that uh, play the bagpipes. As you know, when you go to the uh, law enforcement funerals. Right, right. Uh, so it's almost like the taps out to that, the military. That's correct. Right? It is like the taps. It, it is, exactly. And that's why I wanted to get out of you. I wanted to, I, I led you with that one. <laughs> I know you right. did. <laughs> oh, by the way, it, it, your, your last name is Rosa, Rosa Jr. Now, Jr. Now, what's with the Jr.? That's uh, correct. Uh, was your father? My or, dad uh, was Frank Sr. No, he wasn't law enforcement. No. No, but he's uh, he immigrated here f to the United States. From what country? Uh, Azores. The Azores. 1959. Where, where? St. Saint Michael. Fayal. Fayal, yeah. huh? Yeah. I haven't been to that island. One of the island. most beautiful islands, I, he would yeah. say. Absolutely. Yeah. The most beautiful island. I've been to Tercera. That's where my grandfather's from. Yeah. yeah. Big bullfighting island. You know, yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They yeah. try to start. When I was there, a number yeah. of years ago, that was when they were protesting. It, it, oh, yes, know, yeah, yes. Going, you know, some people well, they didn't there. like the bulls getting injured. And right, then, right, right. And we, was, mean, and we were able to see them actually running the streets in some of those, you know, nothing like Spain. Right. But they let the bull loose in the uh, downtown area of the village, and everyone's running around chasing the bull. And it, uh, as no, the bull's man, chasing them. Oh, bull's chasing them, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No bull. <laughs> no bull. There's no bull about that. No streets. That's, I mean, it's like going back in time. Exactly. Cobblestone streets, oh, yeah. real cobblestone. That's we're right. in a We're in a small... Uh, like a 20, 24 foot bus, right. and they had to go around this turn in the road, and without cars coming the other way the, the, to make the turn, we were looking out the window and watching the gutter. In the gutter, they have all tiled roofs. Sure. Well, not all, but a lot of them are tiled yeah. roofs. Yeah. And the gutter, which is all t also tiled, they were pushing against the building to push the top of the uh, the bus by hitting right. the corner of the gutter. It was so close a to it. A little tight there. I mean, these streets are narrow. They sure are. They weren't built for buses. They, yeah, and no. I was there during Christmas time. Really? And they string um, lights from house to house, right across, the, or building to building in the mm -hmm. town. It's gorgeous. And right. if you're walking, it gives you the appearance that it's an entire blanket of, of lights. But there's, you know, when you get under them, there's, you know, there might be six inches of space. Right, right. But when you're looking at them from a little bit of a distance, when they're lit up, I mean, it's, it's gorgeous. It's yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely. We were there for Christmas. Uh, we were heading over to Bosnia to visit the oh. troops. In fact, I had General Centracchio on the show last show, and uh, we got diverted to the Azores because we lost an engine in our C-130 on oh. the way over. Well, that's not too good. So we stopped there yeah. right. to change planes, get another plane, and uh, we went over to Linda and Taysa, Hungary. We went to yeah. visit two orphanages in the Bosnian. Right. This is during the Bosnian crisis, by the way. Right. And then we flew back in lucky enough to have to pick up the other plane so we we got the st another stop there right. so it was fun it was yeah. a lot of fun yeah, it's a beautiful beautiful. place really a, really a beautiful sure place yeah quite a few portuguese immigrants are here there are more i'm told there are more portuguese people there are more azorians in rhode island and southeastern massachusetts than they are in the azores that, most likely yeah most probably yeah now have you been back there i have a few times yeah last time was in 1987 
Wow. I visit. I haven't been back since. Well, but, uh, shame on you. So your yeah, kids haven't well, been there. You got three kids, lots right? Lots been going on. I got three kids. Yep. So a lot's been going on. Married. Yeah, you're making three kids. Yeah, you know, you know life. <laughs> 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 Trying to get on the job. <laughs> so getting back to this, this parade, it yes. started in, in 1973. Yeah. 73, and then you had the little hiatus there right. a while. And then in 1983, the parade picked back up right. with the help of uh, many civilian and police uh, uh, folks down in the Quidnick Island. And again, the purpose of the parade was to commemorate law enforcement right. uh, and the works of law enforcement officers throughout the year. Um, and since that time, it's become more of a, a memorial and a commemoration of officers killed in the line of duty. Right. And which is, which is uh, people don't realize, my, my nephew's a, a police officer in Pawtucket, but I've known this a long time before he was around. People don't realize the danger that a police officer deals with on a daily basis. You know, when they compare other things like firemen or whatever else, they say how dangerous the job is. But on a day-to-day -day basis, yeah. nobody's job is tougher than a policeman. And yeah. that, a local policeman, I'm saying that to boost you up, it's a fact. Yeah. It's a fact. When you go, you think about it, and you folks think about it, when you pull over a vehicle, especially one with darkened windows or whatever, yeah. and you've got to approach that vehicle, you, first of all, you don't know how many people are in it. You don't know their attitude because you can't see them. You don't know if they got weapons, and especially if you're alone. But even if you're not alone, even if you got somebody on the other side of the car, right. you got another cop with you, right. um, you don't know what the heck the deal you're it's dealing with. It's a un very big unknown. It is. And it's unpredictable, I would say. You know. it's, yeah, it's a very, very uh, stressful job. Yeah. Certainly one of the most stressful jobs there is, and not yeah. to undermine the firemen or whatever, but right. it, I think that when you got to worry about somebody with a weapon, uh, at, uh, at at behind every door, uh, in every window, um, you know. I mean, I have times I don't like cops. You know, when I get a ticket, I don't like them. Yeah. <laughs> but, but but there are times that, uh, yeah. for the most part, and um, that your job is uh, is worth more than you oh, get paid for, more, or, or and, and worth more credit than you get. And I, and I think uh, that's what uh, we want to commemorate in this parade: that uh, these officers, men and women, just like me went to work that particular day and didn't return home. Well, I saw there's, there's four, I think it's five now, but Tucker that have been killed, and I literally was there when two of them, Toolsdale and Newburgh, were killed on Pawtucket Avenue in Pawtucket when I was a kid, and we, was, we were trapped. We were told to stay where we were. We had been walking by on Pawtucket Avenue, and this guy was just shooting at cars going by. Yep. And just then, as we are walking by, uh, we didn't know what was happening. They weren't shooting at us. We just heard a couple of pinging noises, and all of a sudden, Oh, hell broke loose. Cops from all kinds of cop cars pulled up, and we were stuck, me and this friend of mine, Billy, were stuck behind this car, and we had to stay there during the entire shootout. They couldn't take a chance of moving us because we were right in the line of fire. Mm. The guy had his mother held up in the house mm. uh, right on Pawtucket Avenue and Pawtucket near Sales Avenue. Mm. And before, we, when mm. all was said and done, they shot between two and 3,000 bullets in that building, in that house. Wow. Before it was all done, and when they fi he finally released his mother, and then he said there was a side door to the house. I'll, I'll not forget it as long as I live. There was a side door to the house, and you open the side door, and you could go to the first floor and go upstairs. Well, he had been on the second floor with his mother, shooting, 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 and they were firing, trying to be careful about hitting her, right? but they were shooting back at him. And then he came down the first floor with his mother, and he was shooting out the different windows, so they, that's why they didn't go in the house. What ended up, he ended up letting his mother go, and then he threw out seven weapons. We were watching them. We were watching them from the, the windows of the car, uh, a parked car. We're behind the parked car, and every once in a while you stick your head up, and all of a sudden you see him throwing guns out. He threw a gun out the second floor front window, threw another gun out the side window, downstairs threw another gun out. He threw seven guns out the window, out windows in that house. And he says, I give up, I give up. Well, Tuesdale and Newburgh, two Pawtucket police officers, they were detectives. They walked down the side uh, of the house. The, the entrance walked up the stairs, and they opened the hallway door. One of them stepped in, and as he stepped in, the other one was right behind him. This guy blasted him, killed them both. Well, then they fired on that building like crazy. They were because they were all around. They surrounded the building. Right. The biggest fear was that people shooting each other. Sure. You know, um, getting yourself in a crossfire. Mm friendly fire thing, but that they went, as you know, and, and obviously emotions take over then. You know, they killed two cops right there, just dropped them, right? They mm -hmm. fell back onto the site, you know, on, off the stairs, and, and we were there. I was only a kid, right. 
And uh, they got him out of there alive, believe it or not. Yeah. And they took him out and took him right in front of us. And he used to have the paddy wagon at the time. He's a big, big guy. They, they cuffed him in the back. And here comes the sergeant, come running over. They were, he was obviously best friends with these cops. They, they back, back in the day, they used to use the blackjacks, you know, the, with the BBs right, in them. Right, right. The lead, I mean, those were, those saps, were nasty. They call them saps, he cracked saps. him right in the back of the head. And they had to grab him because he would have killed him right there in front of everybody. He didn't care. He was so infuriated. This guy, this man killed two of his friends. I mean, obviously, that was not the right thing to do. But, I mean, when the emotions take over and you, you see your own, one of your friends killed mm -hmm. unnecessarily, this guy, you know, he conned everybody, he told him he was... He was all done. I give up. I give up. And he sat in the, he was in the closet. That's how come he didn't get killed, apparently. He was in the closet, box blocked by the chimney on one side and the, and the stove on the other side. So he was hunkered down back there. After he shot the two cops, he, he fell behind there. So that's why he didn't get, he didn't get killed. Mm. But uh, that guy's out of, out of jail. And he ended up getting out of jail years later. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was sad. It was very that's sad. A, that's a... But that goes, and I think about that every time I, you know, I get a little mad at the cop giving me a ticket or something. But, you know, you guys do a tough, tough job, especially when you got kids to go home to and, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. see what happens in a situation, what happened just in Boston. No, and, and it goes on every day. I yeah. mean, it was in Boston, it was in Texas, that explosion, the officers in the fireplace went in right. to get people out. Well, they, it was 15 the first was responders first or something? Respond, half the, some of the, half of the fire department down there. So yeah. going into that situation, so um, you know it is it is what it is. I mean, it's an unknown situation every day. You could have a quiet day, and the last hour of your shift turns into right. a complete nightmare. But well, there was one incident recently where a guy got killed. He was just getting ready to retire. Which I, I forget where it was. It was in the last few months, three or four months. Of some cop went into some situation. He got mm -hmm. himself killed mm -hmm. within days of being mm -hmm. retired after something yeah. like twenty-five or thirty years. And, and that 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 as a common theme and it's uh it's not always the young officer sometimes it's the veteran officer that's been on a while and uh, he uh, faces his demise going to work one night could be his last month on the job you know so well that's why the that's why the uh the, the, the stress factor is is so prevalent with police officers that's why they they have such a some of them have a hard time dealing with it it's very, very difficult to deal with it's yeah. got to be yeah. and the, the, the home the home life and everything's got to be yeah. So you say that how many were killed last year? 120. 120. 120. Police According to the officers down memorial page, it's on the web and it uh, lists the stories of the officers that were killed last year in the line of duty. Uh, one thing that is interesting, Bob, is that uh, officers may have been injured from prior incidents, a decade prior. Right. But succumbed to those injuries last year. In fact, one of the officers was involved in an accident in 2003 right and from those injuries he became sick continued living on but then succumbed to those injuries and then and, and classified as a line of duty death well yeah I can understand that like it's, we talked about off camera not saying exactly. any, much about it but exactly. I have a titanium plate in my neck from 2002 exactly, exactly. and uh, and that's that, killing that, me now exactly and that'll be uh, what we face as the 9-11 officers uh, continue on in their careers and their lives from all that drama that happened in New York. Right. Oh, in the air. You don't know exactly. what the heck was in the air. The air and people. all those uh, firefighters, all those people that are exposed to that. So these things are considered line of duty deaths. And that's that's why it's an ongoing process. Right. You know? Now, you said how many states are represented? Uh, we're going to have approximately five to six states, mostly the New England area. We try to get the right. departments from New England. Um, the parade committee itself reaches out to the Northeast and New England area, in particular New Jersey. We have a lot of officers that come and spend that weekend with us in Newport. Uh, they lose a lot of officers every year, and we have, yeah, huh? you know, we have a lot of representatives. I'd like to be working in Camden or, uh, um. you know, in New York too. You know, <laughs> those those are those are very uh, very big areas. You know, during the storms and all that stuff that happened, people get injured, and that's what right. we reach out to mostly the Northeast and New England area. And this year, as you know, um, we'll be um, mem remembering uh, Sergeant Maxwell Dolly from Providence Police. He'll be uh, one of our main honorees this year. He lost his life a year ago this month. Explain that. Um, uh, Sergeant Dooley was responding to a call for officer needs assistance right. in Providence one afternoon. Uh, and at some point in time, uh, he was involved in a motor vehicle accident. That cost him his life. Yeah, there's the other thing, too. Yeah, just you know, an just, accident, a car accident. Well, that's, that's one thing that uh, when you research some of these uh, deaths, 
uh, and, and I don't want to be morbid, but uh, Officer Down Memorial Page, you know, lists the uh, amount of gunfire deaths, right. accidents, motor vehicle, boating, flying, airplane crashes. You know, we had officers in Maine uh, two years ago that was killed in an airplane wreck that was searching for somebody in the woods. So right. these are all uh, incidents that happen while that person is serving his or her community. Again, I go back to how many of us would want to approach a car full of people that you don't know who and how many and what they're carrying in that car. Exactly. Especially at night yeah. and, at, I'm, and, and alone, being alone. Many, oftentimes, yeah. like, most oftentimes, most officers, uh, with the exception of big cities, will ride alone. Exactly. But some cities are faced with, as we know, financial issues. So they have to they cut have back. They have to cut yes. back numbers. So the officers are left to be on their own, cover larger districts, uh, and then we, don't, we want to talk about our fellow officers that work in the Midwest states out in those big open areas. How about, how about these alone. border guys? I see them, they're going right. in, the, in, the, in the woods uh, looking for right. drug dealers or, or drug um, smugglers, and, whatever, and they're right. by themselves some right. of the time. Most of the time. And I'm thinking, right. wait a minute, if I'm a big yeah. drug smuggler that's got yeah. millions of dollars involved here, right. you know, yeah. a bullet only costs yeah. 60 cents, right. you know? And then again, uh, the officer could be simply on the side of a highway with a traffic stop and right. get hit by a drunk get nailed. driver. Yep. Yep. So it, it, it just, it's how things happen. All right, how many and what kind of bands you said? Well, we have 22 bands yep. coming this year. How many bagpipes? Uh, I would say um, out of the 22 bands, I'd say 11 bagpipe bands, including uh, the New Jersey United Police Officers Band. Oh, that's band. the big one, though, is That's it, a huh? very large contingent yeah. that comes up. Uh, the Providence Police Pipe and Drum will be leading our parade this year. Uh, several other uh, bands like the Rhode Island Highlanders that oh, yeah. play every year with us. Oh, that's uh, that's uh, uh, General Centracchio's band. Yes, and yeah. then they come every year. They led the parade uh, two years ago. Uh, and then we also have uh, Cathedral High School, an all-girl marching band uh, that comes up every year. Uh, we have the Boy Scouts of America band that uh, plays and wow. comes out every year. And they love to come back, you know. Yeah, so, it's also uh, a great time of year too. It's not too hot. It's not like Fourth of July, and it's not, it, not it cold. It can be a little cool, but well, I think I'd rather have it cool. I think if I'm in a, I think a so. wool uniform, yeah, it's or a one point four mile walk, so yep. or march. Yep. And, you know, it begins like I said at the Hampton Inn in in on, Middletown on West Main Road in Middletown. West Main Road is also one. Is that one thirty eight? That's Route one fourteen. One fourteen. One thirty eight. East Main. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then it marched. We marched south into uh, where now we've moved into the central part of Newport, Washington Square. Okay. So we end up right down the uh, downtown Newport, where the review stand is located. Uh, many of these marching units. Um, I don't know if many of your viewers know. We do have. Um, uh, excuse me. Sorry, I just lost my train. Go ahead. Uh, we do have um, many of marching bands. Yes, but the drill teams also compete in a competition. Right. Um, so what happens is um, many departments uh, send their elite marching drill units. Right. Right. The Honor Guard uh, departments. And they like, perform and too. They perform at the review stand. Oh, that's cool. Do rifle drills. Right. Hackensack, New Jersey, sends a representative group every year. They've been, been uh, winners many years in a row until they were dethroned by Attleboro Police. Oh, so how cool Attleboro is that? Attleboro comes down yeah. and they do a great job. So there's many uh, groups that do that and they participate in that. We give out awards for the winners of the drill competition. Uh, the parade committee uh, also awards the longest traveled police department. Right. Uh, last couple of years it's been the R Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Oh, they're uh, always cool too. Right, they they're send they're, down they're the cool troop. looking with their red. That's correct. And, yep. they're, and they're getting bigger. That contingency is getting bigger. That's one of the things that happened. They had come for years, then stopped coming, but we started reaching out. Right. So the goal is perhaps we can get some horses at some point in time. Uh -huh. So it's always, we're always working towards getting bigger. You got to talk better. to the people over at Glen. The Glen Farm. Glen Farm. Well, again, I had them on the show years ago. Oh, did you? With the, the polo. Oh, and that's really? a, the, the best secret around. Yeah. That's a great thing yeah. on Saturday yeah. afternoon, yeah. 5 o'clock. Absolutely. Yeah. The polo. Yeah. I don't, and you can even uh, tailgate over there. Yeah, you bring your own food. That's you bring what your I'm own hearing. whatever. Yeah. And tailgate yeah. right along the, the, yeah. the I was field. A, I was a Portsmouth cop first for a while. Oh, no kidding. About two and a half years. And that's when they started the Glen program up there. Yep. But I had not realized after I left uh, that it had become a real big program. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I don't know if the same guy runs it or not. But, you know, we got to get Keating was his name. Yeah, he's still there. He's still there? Still there. How do you like that? How do you like that? The kid's yeah, still got it. Still there. He's that, running a good operation. That was, there. A, that was a good, they were on here, what, 10, 12 years ago? Yeah, no, he's, he's it's expanded. There's quite a bit of folks that head out and see that. And they have, they have uh, um, 
events or, or, or the, the games, whatever they call them, uh, polo on horseback. And they're Venezuela plays Spain, and this one plays. Right. It's unbelievable, the groups yes. that they have. Uh, that's big money. It is. Uh, fly it is. horses over here? Yes. Now, that's crazy. Yeah. Anyway, let's get back to your thing. You have to pray it again. It's the date. It's on a May the 5th, Sunday, May the 5th. What time in the morning? 11.50 a.m. So you want off. people to line up. You want people out well, there by 10 o'clock anyway. I, I think the best thing is at 11.30 we have a ceremony that commemorates the officers that were killed in the line of duty. Um, there'll be some family members from these offices that okay, were killed. Okay, now where is that? Day. That happens That's right at the beginning? That's going to happen right at the Hampton Inn. That happens right at the, at the Hampton beginning. Inn. That's Hampton a good Inn. spot to be. Another okay. good spot. There's plenty of room all the way down the road. But IBC, if you're at the review stand area, you get to see a lot of these bands perform. And that's right on Washington? Washington Square. And there's plenty of room down there for everybody. Now, for people that don't know where Washington Square is, didn't they just rebuild that whole area? They did. They, did. Just re they did. that? If you come down Route 114 right. and you follow that all the way in onto Broadway, all the way towards Thames Street, right. we're at the bottom of the square. Washington Square at Thames is right where our review stand is going to be. That's, that's where they have that, uh, that round thing up the hill, isn't it? Where That's correct. Well, the uh, Colony House is there. Right. The Courthouse is there. Right. They've uh, done some new additions there. There's a nice horse trough that they put in. They spent a lot of money fixing it up. It's really nice. Yeah, they did a nice job. Nice down place. There. Nice park. Yeah. Nice now, place now to watch. how do you fund the parade? The parade is funded. How can people uh, help you fund well, the parade? Well, originally, the parade had private uh, funding sponsors from, and sponsors from uh, banks, large companies. As times went on, economic times happened, we would get uh, the, you know, we'd get uh, cut out of some of the funding. So what happened <laughs> in the last 10 years, yeah. we've uh, concentrated on local businesses, local uh, residents, right. giving money to fund the parade. And that happens uh, through a lot of fundraising that we do. Uh, that police parade has become a police parade weekend. And I don't know if your viewers know that, but on Saturday we have an annual golf tournament that's been going on for the last five years oh. up at the Newport National uh, Golf Course. Well, I got a hypnotist here that plays golf. Oh, yeah, it's he's a, great, a big golfer. He's know. a big golfer. Oh, yeah. It's a great he tournament. He helps people hypnotize them to play golf. Does better. he? Yeah. Well, he might want to hypnotize himself. Well, he though. should come down there and play with us that day. <laughs> but that's 146 that's players. That's on May the 4th. May the 4th, Saturday. On Saturday, May the what 4th. What time does that start? That, start? that That's a shotgun start at 11 o'clock. Oh, that's, that's you know, late so enough. It's nice. It goes all afternoon. It's 18 holes. Yep. It includes your golf cart and uh, we take Don't care say of the money, though. You can't I'm not going to say anything on that. Prices. But it, again, <laughs> it's all based on fundraising. So we fill that up. That goes to us. Right. You know, we give the uh, golfers a nice steak fry at the end of the oh, afternoon wow. at the FOP Maybe I'll come hall. for the fry. It's very nice. I can't golf. I, I, I had to give it up. I, I can't either. Fry. I try, though. We have no, I used to love to play golf. I can't golf. Yeah. Uh, too many back operations. Oh, boy. Anyway, Frank, last but not least. If it's a website, you got a website, right? Yes, we do. We, if you go to www.policeparade.org, you can see everything about our parade. There's a history on it. There's all kinds of information on how to give to the parade, how to be a part of it, and, and, uh, and support us. All right. Well, hopefully they'll do it. Again, say the, say the uh, Again, website. It's uh, www.policeparade.org. Okay. All right. Frank, Thanks. thank you for stopping by. Thanks so much for having us. Frank Rosa, Jr. Frank Rosa, Jr. Is that still around? No, he, he, he passed on? passed away this year. Oh, sorry to hear that. Thank you Sorry to much. hear that. Thank you. Yeah. How many brothers and sisters? I got two younger brothers. That's it? That's it. So you're the big guy. I'm, I'm supposedly the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> well, give us a clip. We'll be right back on An Hour with Bob with our next guest. All right, good. Bob, we're on location here at Table 28 here in East Greenwich, Rhode Island. And wait till you see the guests we have tonight. But I'm not showing you yet. No, it's a surprise. It's a very, very big surprise. And I'm doing something I never do. I'm using cards. I never use cue cards. You know that. This is my 15th year doing an hour with Bob. You know, 15 years. We're starting our 15th year tonight. And when I, when I started this show, an hour with Bob, I had, and Bob's Big Adventure, I had visions of being actually a movie star, not a TV star. I, I did the movie with John Travolta, and I was in the movie with Brad Pitt and Anthony Hopkins, and then I thought I was going to go on to bigger and better things, but with a purpose. And my purpose was to gain notoriety so I could do Toys for Tots and collect millions of toys. Well, I'm not in Hollywood, and I'm not in the movies, and I'm not on big time TV. And I'm not the host of Tonight Show. That was my, my big thing. I always wanted to be Johnny Carson's replacement. But I didn't make it there. But 
I did one thing with your help. We collected thousands upon thousands of toys in the last 14 years for Toys for Tots. And with your help, we will continue to do that. So here we are in our 15th year, down here in East Greenwich, having some goodies, some good calamari. We got crab cakes and oh, we're gonna eat good tonight. But before I get to my guests, guests, over the next three or four months, you're gonna be bombarded with ads for a casino, against the casino, and I got an idea. I like, and I dislike, I'm kind of neutral, I'm totally neutral about the casino. I don't have any, I'm not looking for a job at the casino, I'm not against the casino because I'm friends with somebody else at the other end. I have no, no view either way. So I have a great idea. I'd like to tape a documentary by visiting casino towns, interviewing townspeople, interviewing authorities in towns. I have no interest either way. And I'm only interested in the truth. So, how's this for an idea? How about the casino opponents and opponents pull some dough and uh, send me on my way to do Corey? Wanna go? Corey and I will go to Vegas, we'll go to Reno, we'll go to uh, Virginia City, we'll go to Atlantic City, and we'll get the truth. Now, it's time. Oh, so, don't forget now, you can get a hold of me. You know how to get a hold of me, I'm easy to get a hold of. I'm not even going to tell you. Bevent1 at Cox.net. That's good enough. And we'll get to the truth. Now to my guest. Tonight, I've been trying to get this young lady for months and months. And I finally got her in here and I enticed her with food. It's always <laughs> the way to a woman. you got to get the food. If at all, you got a chance. If you got any chance at all. She's a Yankee fan, folks. She's a Yankee fan. She's here in Rhode Island. I don't know how that works. I guess she, over, she makes it because she's an attractive woman and she's smart. And she's got... I think everything together. And I said this only once before, folks, in 14 years, now in our 15th year, I said this only once before that a woman would make it big time in this market, and she did. That was Christine Johnson. I said another man would make it big time, and he did. And, and that was, uh, uh, what was his name? Channel 12. Uh, Tony Potts. See, you, I thought you were going to come up with it for me. He made it too. And I, and I suspect that the girl that I'm going to interview tonight is going to make it big time in television. And with me tonight, representing NBC10 Sports. NBC10 Sports. And actually, NBC Sports with the poker series is Catherine Tappen. <laughs> she, she got me all baffled already. <laughs> Catherine, how you doing? Very good, thank you. Yeah. How long have you Enjoying. been with Channel 10? Uh, a little over a year. I got there last January. Um, started actually moved up in January. Started in February, and it's been a year and three months so far. Wow! Mm -hmm. I didn't realize you've been there already that long. I know it's it's flown by though, very quickly. So, so you're a Jersey girl, right? Yes. Rutgers, Proud of it. Rutgers. <laughs> I can't say that word. Rutgers. Well, good evening, folks, and welcome back to an hour with Bob. That was a quite quite a lively interview, and uh, remember. Go to the parade. It's in Newport. That's a great parade, anyway. That that, that whole thing. Hey, who? Doctor Doug. Doctor nice Doug. Nice to see you, Bob. Nice to see you. Doctor Douglas Mako. I, I I should point out right off the bat, Doug is a good friend of mine, personal friend of mine. Um, in fact, we've traveled together, as a matter of fact, a few times. When remember when we went to Arizona? That's went to right. Arizona the Grand one Canyon. time. Went to the Grand Canyon. And uh, remember how I was driving to the Grand Canyon? 110 kid? miles an hour. Oh, yeah, does it. I woke <laughs> 110, up. 115, yeah. In my car. He wakes up, he says to me, we can't, he had finished a, uh, a seminar. A seminar. And my deal for going with him on that trip was that after, at some time during the trip, we were going to go to the Grand Canyon. And then it ended up where we were on our last day, we hadn't gone to the Grand Canyon, and here it is the last night, we're leaving the next day. And I said, Doug, we're going to go to the Grand Canyon. He goes, no, 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 we ain't, we ain't got time. So. Doug can fall asleep. He's the opposite of me. He can fall asleep put anywhere, in a anytime. Trance. Just put myself in a yeah, trance. Yeah, he puts himself in a trance. Doug is a hypnotist, by the way, for how many years? 35 years. Wow. Started 30, when I was six. 35-year hypnotist. Started at six years old. Well, he gets in the vehicle, the rented vehicle. We're in, what, Scottsdale? We're in Scottsdale or, Scottsdale. or Phoenix or Scottsdale. Right. Which is where right, my right outside of Phoenix. Which is where my grandfa grandfather lived at one time, remember? Uh -huh. We're in Scottsdale, Arizona. He gets in the car after doing the seminar, and we're heading back to the hotel, he thinks. He falls asleep. I get on the highway. Now, it's a normal six-hour ride from, from there to, right, the, the Grand, Grand Canyon, Canyon the, the bottom end of the Grand Canyon. He falls asleep. I jump right on the highway, and 
three out, two and a half hours later or so, he, Doug wakes up, gives it one of these. He looks over, looks down, and what did you see? It was actually 115 I was going, 115 miles an hour. 115 miles an hour. It's like being in a jet at, <laughs> at, uh, at Weber, like a stealth jet going into a target. And, and we're almost there, right? Right. <laughs> Scared the daylight side of me. Like, wow. And, and if I remember, I had my foot up. <laughs> we, got, we got there, got to the Grand Canyon about 1.30 in the morning, 1 o'clock in the morning. Went, checked into a hotel. Right. And you wanted to do some sunrise shots, right? Which I did. Right. Which I did, which meant I slept for about two hours. I right. got up, went to the, the rim of the canyon mm -hmm. while you were still sleeping, and I did some shots, and I came back, got you, and then we went back. Didn't we go back there? We went back to the, uh, yeah, it was the we're back su together. southern, southern side. Yeah, the so, yeah, southwest, southwestern end of the Grand Canyon, which is awesome. Beautiful, spectacular, beautiful, spectacular. beautiful. One of the seven wonders of the world. Yep, spectacular view, especially in the, the sunrise. I would have loved to get it. Someday, someday on my bucket list, I'd like to go there and get sunset pictures mm -hmm. on the Grand Canyon. But the sunrise was amazing. The colors, remember? Oh, All yeah. the different colors from the, the different sun. layers of right, the, right? Right, Spectacular. Absolutely. So you got to see that. If you have to do one beautiful, historic, I excuse me, natural site in America, that's, that's the place that, to that's, go. That's the one to do. Well, the other, another one that's great, but it's not one of the seven wonders of the world as is the Grand Canyon, is Yosemite National Park. Never been there, actually. Awesome. Absolutely right. beautiful. I mean, beautiful. You, you can go up in the mountains or down in the valley. In fact, in the wintertime, you can't get up in the mountains because it's like they have one road that passes through it's about 11,000 feet up mm -hmm. uh, but you have mountains higher than that as you know in that right. part of the world you know we think the uh, our big mountain is what Mount Washington 6,200 feet yeah yeah I mean that's like that's like a, a little hill compared to there's probably uh, 15 mountains in uh, between Colorado and Washington State that are, that are more than 12,000 feet Mm -hmm. Right? Exactly. Mount Rainier, sure. Mount Rainier, Mount Adams. Right. Right? Right. Uh, uh, Mount Chasta in, in California. Mm -hmm. I think right away. Mount Whittier. Mount Whittier. Mount Whittier. Well, that's right. the, yeah, that's the biggest. No, is that the biggest one in the United States? I think it's the biggest one in the continental United States. Continental United States. States. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But right away, I think of uh, Chasta, which is, they named the soda after. That's in California. Uh huh. Mount Hood, Mount Hood is in Oregon. Right. And it looks like you're driving on Route 5 or Route 101. Which I, which I drove all the way up to the Canadian border from Mexico one time, you drive by, it, it, it looks like, like they have the state capitol lit up at night. It looks like it's lit up, it's uh -huh. snow-capped. Uh -huh. And you could, although I was there during December, but I've been there other times of the year where even in the summer it's snow-capped because it's so high. It's right. 14,000, 13,800 or something like that. And then of course Mount Rainier, which is uh, 15,000 feet. I know it's the highest one over in that range. Mm -hmm. But you see real mountains over there. Oh, yeah, huge, huge. In fact, they just had a, um, the worst, uh, the worst avalanche ever recorded just happened a couple of days ago, two or three days ago. They had snowboarders. Five, five, yeah, three, four snowboarders and one skier, I guess it was. Mm -hmm. One guy survived. Were, I think there were six of them and four, five died or five and four died, whatever, sadly. But they were uh, caught up in an avalanche just over the weekend, right? Just, right, right, just a few exactly. Days ago. It was last Sat Friday, either, Friday or Saturday. Anyway, you've been a hypnotist for tw 35 years. 35 years. I started real young, Bob. Wow, wow. Now, now, what do you, what do you, uh, uh, what's your favorite? What do you, what, is, what do you do mostly? Do you do mostly group? So you do mostly I do, I do, I do uh, group seminars as well as I see people individually. Uh, it, it varies depending on the time of the year. Right. And usually, I would say 40% of the people come to see me to quit smoking. Right. 40% of people come to see me for weight loss, right. and then the rest of the people come to see me uh, privately for other types of problems, problems with gambling, gambling addiction, phobias like fear of heights, fear of flying, and what we call sports improvement, golf, tennis, things of that nature. So you can actually change the way somebody functionally does something? You can, uh, you can optimize their performance level. You know, uh, when you look at any sport, uh, the people at the top usually have it's very similar hand-eye coordination, similar athletic skill. Right. But what separates someone who's just average to right. someone who's very good? It's usually what's happening between their ears. Right. They they're thinking of something else that's distracting them, maybe, or they're, right. or they're, they're, uh, people, they're not controlling their... Right. P great athletes say that the game slows down for them, right? They, they are so that, the, heightened focused, well, right? The, that you, hit it, no you hit on something right away. That's what Ted Williams used to say. He could see the... He could count the stitches on the ball when right. it was coming to home plate. Right, right, right. right. The right. last guy to hit... 400. 
406, right. And the same thing with golf. I mean, Tiger Woods, he, he actually went to see a hypnotist when he was a teenager. His father brought him to see a army psychologist who hypnotized him, worked on his focus, worked on his concentration, until he had that problem with a uh, two iron a number of years ago with his... Uh, you mean his wife had the problem with the two iron? Well, his he, head had he, a problem he, with the two iron. He had the problem <laughs> with uh, something else. But until that time, his, his <laughs> mental focus was by far, he would never, never miss a clutch putt. He would always focus in and get the job done. He could just d remove Everything, all distractions. He took every distraction away right, from and him. Just, it was just him and that white ball and hitting it towards the hole. That but was then it became the white girls. He, he had all the, well, all the girls, or white girls or whatever. Girls of all colors, I yeah, think. But, but I, right. I only said that because you said white ball. Anyway, all the, all the females came into play, and that, right. that changed things And the family for him, problems right? that resulted. As a, as, yeah, he had to get distracted. He went through the divorce and or sponsorship, so he went into like a downward spiral. But he seems to be coming back now. Whether he'll ever get his great glory that he was before, only time will tell. But wasn't his big, his big asset the fact that he could drive the ball further than anybody? Yes, when he first came on the scene when he was young, he, until that time, golfers really weren't known for their physical fitness. They were right. more known for going to the 19th hole. Oh, there you go. Like Kel uh, uh, a Daly's, the guy I think of right John off the Daly, bat, John yeah, Daly, right. right? A six pack of Bud and a pack of Marlboro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, a, and a bottle of scotch Jack or something. Daniels, at the right, yeah, exactly the other right. end. And in fact, I saw him in some kind of a show. He was uh, like a, did a cameo, and they showed him like hitting a golf ball or whatever. Right. But you, you could tell he was a drinker. You could tell he was right. a big drinker and a smoker. Smoker, as, right? As you He's point out all the time, you you can spot him right away when they smoke. How can you spot a sm spot a smoker? Well, uh, smokers. Uh, uh, they develop what we call smoker's face, and that is uh, with Caucasians or white, white people, they get a grayish tinge to their to their face. Right, right? to the skin. They, they speed up the re aging process. They get wrinklings around the eyes. Women get more so around the mouth. Is that the from the... That's from the drying of the skin, the being dehydrated, yes. All the, the effects of the nicotine drug on, on the body, they get that kind of sunken, shallow look, high cheekbones, they just kind of get sucked in there. Really? So they got to kind of get that real smoker's face, that, that very noticeable after a while. The good news is that if you stop smoking young enough, a lot of that uh, reverses. reverses. And with all the money you save, even if it doesn't reverse itself, with all the money you save, Bob, you can just go out and get some cosmetic work done and look 15 right, years right. younger, well, right? Well, think about it today now. You've eight, got, your business has got to be great. Eight, I used to smoke Paul Mall Reds. And I find out now they're one of the most expensive cigarettes. Wow. I don't know why, but they are. I guess they don't have a filter. Paul Mall Reds. A full Paul size. Mall Reds. Paul Mall Reds. I used to smoke when, when Paul Malls were out. I would smoke either Lucky Strikes or uh, Old Gold Straights without a filter. Or um, uh, what was the other one? Oh, Camels. But I, Camels was too strong. They were a little Would stronger. you walk a mile for them? Walk a mile for a Camel. But the point is that... Had I continued smoking today, I'd be spending 20 something bucks a day. You might not even be here. I wouldn't be here. Probably wouldn't be here. You know, my father died at 36. He used to smoke old golds. Old golds. Old, go old golds. Uh, old golds. G O L D. Yeah. Old golds. So, yeah, if, if you smoke, if the average smoker smokes one pack a day, that's, say, eight, nine bucks a day, that's $250 a month. That's yeah. 3000 bucks a year. And, and that's what, when people say to me, hey, Bob, how can you afford to go on these trips that you go on? I go, the money that I don't spend on cigarettes, the money that I don't spend on booze, and the money I don't spend on gambling goes in a, a jar or right. a bowl I have, and I use that money to go on trips. And you think about just what you said, just cigarettes. Now add to that a guy that's a big drinker or a woman that's a big drinker. Knock off one drink a, a, a day or three drinks a week or five right. drinks a week. You're, right. you're saving a lot of money, right? right. Right? Exactly. And, and not only with smoking, it's not only just the cigarettes, but it's also higher health insurance premiums. Right. right? You also, uh, you burn holes in your clothes, right? You need, you need to get your house clean, your car clean. And now some companies won't hire you if you are a smoker. Right. Well, they won't hire you. And, if you're and a I agree with that because the smoker is the person that's going out every 20 minutes to have a cigarette. Probably less productive. Yeah, of course they, they got to be. And, and I, they use their health insurance more. They get sick more. That, that's right. that's empirical evidence showing that they develop bronchitis. They get colds more. They develop other health issues much faster than uh, than non-smokers. All right, quickly, what's his, what is hypnosis? Hypnosis. Hypnosis basically is a heightened state of awareness. It's an altered state of consciousness that helps you achieve your goals. It's basically a relaxed, calm state. 
And when you enter this relaxed, calm state, you become more agreeable, more amenable to suggestions, suggestions that you want to accept about And, and that you would, in contrary to some people's belief, you would not do something illegal that, against your illegal own Illegal well, that you were against. You like, for instance, like, for instance, Bob, if I hypnotize you this evening, I put you in a trance, and I give you the following hypnotic suggestions, that tomorrow, Bob, I want you to go out and rob five banks, Fill your vehicle up with cash, and at the end of the day, drive to my to house. my house. Yeah, your no, house. No, my house. <laughs> your my house. house. <laughs> not your house. <laughs> Throw all the money in my house, leave, and then drive back to your house and not remember a thing. Chance only 50-50 you'll show up with the cash. Only 50-50. I tip very generously. <laughs> <laughs> no, in other words, it wouldn't happen. No, it wouldn't say. happen. Now, when you stay a stage hypnotist, right, uh, uh, basically, one of the one of the secrets of stage hypnotists, when they'll get like maybe eight or ten or twelve people on a stage, right. they'll whisper into that person's ear, "We're going to put on a good show tonight." Really? So they try to get people who want to show off in front of their friends, and if the person hesitates, they say, "Well, maybe." Maybe I don't think I can hypnotize well, I mean, that, it. We'll do right, it another right, day. Right. So they get people who want to show up. Uh, that was my next question. How do you know how everybody can't be hypnotized then is what you're saying? Well, if you're of least average intelligence, you can be hypnotized. In fact, you've probably already been hypnotized, Bob. You just haven't been aware of it. You've really? You've probably gone through what we call as a state of awaking hypnosis. Really? Awaking So you Well, you think you hypnotized me before? Many times, Bob. All the times you bought me <laughs> Hypnotize into paying. That's, how you, that's what you did. <laughs> now, what can hypnosis be used for? Because we had to run through these things. How, what can hypnosis be used for? Well, we, obviously, things are like weight, weight smoking, smoking, phobias, fear of heights, fear right. of flame, overcoming bad habits like biting your nails. Right. Uh, some people develop like compulsive behaviors. They actually literally pull their hair out of their All head. All right. I saw a girl playing with her hair. Right. Cracking her hair and sucking her hair. Right. A, a grown-up. Not a little kid. I mean, you can exactly. see that when she's two or three years old, it looks cute. She's sucking her thumb and she's playing with her it's hair. A, it's a, it's a, what we call OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. And, and you can work on that? We can work on that. We also can work people who have other compulsive disorders like gambling. I mean, I've, I've seen a number of people come to see me for gambling. Really? And, and it, it's, to me, that's one of the worst addictions. It because, is. Because you can lose everything. That's you right. Not only house. that, you, become, you start stealing from people to, right. to continue the obsession. Look and at that woman that she supposedly she gave a woman from, uh, she used to be the mayor of San Diego, I think. Oh, yeah, millions of dollars. She went through, her, in fact, her husband's uh, Jack in the Box. Jack in the Box. She, she went through millions 40 million of, of his money. Uh, 40 million of gambling. Yep, gambling. Just gambling. All right, last but not least, how do people get a hold of you? They want to get a hold of Doug, 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 Doug the Doug Mako. How do you get a hold of you? They go on my website, DouglasMako. DouglasMako. Uh, dot com, D-O-U-G-L-A-S-M-A-I-K-O, or I believe my uh, number's on Is it the, up there? Is it coming is, up is there? Is it up there? Is it coming up there? You got it up there? They don't, he don't have it. I'll say it again then. We, we, he missed the boat here. Go ahead. Or oh, you can it? call me at 401-726-5840. 401-726-5840. That's my phone number. All right. Now, uh, and, and you do group sessions? You say? I do group sessions as well as I uh, see people individually. And um, you go all over the place. I mean, you've been all over the United States. I've been uh, from Portland, Maine, to Portland, Oregon, to San Diego, down to, uh, San, uh, down to uh, Miami Beach as far as seminars. But so now, basically, you know, I, I keep most of my seminars. You're slowing it down a little bit, are you, Doug? Uh, I'm uh, slowing down, play, sp spending more time playing golf and uh, enjoying life more as opposed to going from airport to airport. Now, now, do you hypnotize yourself to play golf better? I hypnotize myself to play golf, and I get the, actually I get the most out of my ability to, to play golf. I'm, I'm limited by my, I say, lack of talent, but, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I get the most out of my ability. <laughs> well, thank you, Douglas Mako. Thank you for stopping by and spending part of an hour with Bob. Enjoyed it very much, Bob. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Stay right here, folks, and thank you for spending an hour with Bob. We will see you in two weeks. On, I guess it's May 6th is our next show, our next live taping is May 6th, two weeks from, today is April 22nd, so count two Mondays away, and folks, if you want to be part of the...